Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello, and welcome to the Forgot to Save podcast, the weekly gaming podcast where Stone and I get together and we play the games that for some reason we never got around to playing. And those games had some sort of impact either on the gaming industry at large or held some sort of personal value to at least one of us. Now I did some of that intro out of order, but I'm still going to go ahead and count it if that's all right with you. That's fine with yes. me. Yeah, good job. Excellent. Stone, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Yeah, you know, a little tired, uh, a little, a little worn down this week with work and uh, just you know, continue illnesses in the house. Uh, but I'm glad to be here. Good. Yeah, I'm glad to be here too. Here in in my basement office. <laughs> here in my garage. Where and <laughs> you know what I value more than uh, all these geckos around me? Sure. Nothing comes to mind. Knowledge. Oh, knowledge. knowledge. Sure. sure. Good. Ty Lopez reference in 2024. Very, very <laughs> relevant. Actually, you know what? I said the other day I had my nephew staying with yeah. us. He made a Ty Lopez what? reference. I was like, I thought that meme was like far dead. A and but I mean, sh isn't he of the age where he shouldn't even remember those YouTube ads? Yeah. Uh, something tells me it came back on TikTok. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. What do you think Ty's doing? He's 46 years old, by the way. Happy, uh, happy birthday, April 11th to Ty Lopez, everyone. Sure, he's out there grinding, he's reading, yeah. he's getting his mind strong. This is irrelevant. <laughs> Ooh, I'll have to watch this later. Becoming a parent can make you rich by Ty Lopez. All right, bookmarking. Good news. In America? Yes, it's called child labor. <laughs> oh, okay. So I could just like put him in the backyard and have them like dig holes and pay them a, just a very small amount of money, and that will... Pay? What's this pay business? Oh, See, I misunderstood. Okay, weak intro to this episode. <laughs> I think it's one of our better you ones. You got it on the first try, but maybe it's not worth keeping. It wasn't even the first try. It was my third. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, you know what? We're giving you a pass because I interrupted you on that. That's fair. That's fair. Um, no, so we don't have Ty, uh, Ty Lopez on this episode. But please make sure you hit that subscribe button. I because hate coming... you open the door for that. <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> We can become rich parents. Not together, though. That'd be kind of <laughs> weird. Anyway, um, so so let's get into it. I, I don't know that we have a whole lot of kind of like newsworthy topics, although some things did happen this week. Uh, sure. Something I'm quite excited about, and I'm sure I'll be gushing over that in a moment. But uh, let's... Can't think of anything. Let's... Uh, sh you should. You should. <laughs> For those of you wondering, it is currently February 22nd, 2024. Yesterday, February 21st, something miraculous happened, but we'll get there. So what... Have you been spending your time in the gaming world this week? You know, I have also been busy... Uh, with work, and I have a big in-person session for a tabletop game coming up tomorrow. So I've been spending a lot of time writing that. Yeah. I haven't played as many games, but there are two games I still ended up playing this week. Okay. Uh, stop me if you heard it before. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'm playing through Persona, Persona 3, 3 Reload. Reload. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. So the thing with Persona is that uh, it works off of a calendar, right? Okay. And there's a certain amount of days you have free to do different activities, like meet with people and get your, like, it's called your social link, like, to max rank. Sure. And, like, you have social stats as well you have to level up. I felt like I was doing pretty well, but I'm coming to the tail end of the game, and now I'm worried I might not 100% my first playthrough, which, like, if you're experienced with a Persona game... That's like something you strive for. Mm. So I'm a little disappointed in myself, possibly. I'll have to let you know if it gets better when I actually finish. Okay. So that's my big uh, concern right now, <laughs> gaming-wise. Um, and yes, yesterday, on top of a big announcement, there was also a Nintendo Direct, right? a Partner Direct. Unexpectedly, they announced a revival of one of my favorite games from the 3DS called Pocket Card Jockey. I don't know. Have you seen this? No. I want to say I saw you talking about it in Discord, which, by the way, we have a Discord. You should join. Um, but I don't know anything about it. Sure. Pocket Card Jockey is where you are a jockey. You race horses. And in order to progress through the race, you have to play. They call it solitaire, but it's not exactly solitaire. It's kind of you get a card. Let's say you get a five. And you have to attach it to the um, sequential card so you can attach it to a six or a seven and that clears that off the board and you keep going as long as you can attach other stuff to it 
the more boards you clear in the time limit, the better stamina and stuff your horse gets throughout the race. It's a very silly, quirky game. Sure. Mixing jockeying and solitaire, which are two <laughs> concepts that are never really put together. Uh, it's very real, well written. The dialogue is like funny and interesting, and there's a surprising amount of content. I was very excited to see it on Switch. I got it day one mm-hmm. uh, because I think... Despite me boycotting Game Freak's other big series, I think this is one they actually deliver quality-wise, and I have not been let down so far. So I've played a little bit of Pocket Card Jockey and Persona 3 Reload, and then obviously this. Uh, This being the the other Uh, game we're going to... Stanley Parable. The the Stanley... What? Did you not... Yeah, I put a lot of hours in a Stanley Parable, like we said we were going to do this week. So I'm prepared. Hold, hold I got notes. For hold it. on. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Hold, hold on. Are our wires crossed? Are you just? No, we were supposed to play Stanley Parable this week. Can't. No, I played Ori. Obviously. Oh my word! Oh <laughs> my word! Because I haven't even bought, let alone installed, or played Stanley Parable, and I was. Remember earlier when you said I should have just hung up the call? I, I was about to. I was about to <laughs> no, run. Obviously, I played Ori. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, I'm looking at this pocket card jockey, and yeah, I, I mean, frankly, you're you're giving it a glowing recommendation, and I'm looking at it, and the way you describe it, I, I feel like, okay, there is a demo. I'm going to have to download and try the demo because I am just at a loss as to how this game would hold someone's attention for more than a few minutes at a time. That's what you think, but it's the one more turn syndrome. Okay. Okay. It's like, oh, Civ 5, I'll just play the next turn, and then it's 2 a.m. It's kind of that, you know? Now, Um, but if I had to describe it, it would just be pure silliness. Sure. And I definitely get the vibe from that from the screenshots. Not a game to be taken seriously. No. Or ultra competitively maybe you know you just take it the other way i'm afraid to even look into it (laughs) is there an online component there is now oh wow in the switch version uh i don't have any interest in that but yes you can um a big part of it for me on the 3ds was also naming the horses yeah to see how ridiculous i can go with it um i don't remember any of the horses name except for some reason a very stupid one stuck with me. One of my best horses in the 3DS version, I named Rolling Funyun. <laughs> so when I got uh, my second horse in the <laughs> Switch version, of course I named it Rolling, Rolling Funyun. Funyun Jr. And she has been killing it. She's only gotten first and second places in all the yeah. races. Yeah, yeah the, so the genetics Funyun are strong. Jr. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> through, through generations, both uh, hardware and horses. So let's let's actually go back to the Nintendo Direct because it was actually it was, it was a fairly decent one I thought. Yeah, it was a partner showcase, so people weren't expecting much. But I feel like we got I there were three very cool announcements in my opinion. So what what were the three for you? Obviously, Pocket Card Jockey, yep. which completely surprised me. I was blindsided by it. Uh, the new Super Monkey Ball looks like it's got a really cool, interesting style, sure. and Super Monkey Ball will probably work very well on the Switch. And Endless Ocean, uh, it was actually very interesting to me. Um, my wife really liked Abzu, mm. so I think she might enjoy this. Yeah. Plus 16-person co-op, exploring the ocean, what? just kind of relaxing with the homies, you know? I don't think I, kn- I saw that one. Okay. It was the very last announcement. I will have to go but back. It was, yeah, it just seemed like a fun, open world, relaxing, exploring the ocean there's like a lot of real animals. There's a lot of make believe creatures, extinct creatures, but you just swim around the ocean and find them. Okay, so, I looks cool. I am I am with your wife on uh, absolutely loving Abzu. Gorgeous, relaxing, beautiful game. So I will be taking a look at that. Okay, so uh, pocket card jockey, endless ocean, and super monkey super ball. monkey ball. That's right, super monkey ball. Uh, and I'm looking. What'd you see? So that, oh, Banana Rumble. So for me, uh, number one, they showed off at least, uh, what, two of the Xbox games that were previous exclusives that are coming. So Grounded, which will be a lot of fun on the Switch, I think, as well as uh, Pentiment, which I don't don't really know anything about Pentiment. 
Didn't they also show Sea of Thieves, or am I thinking PlayStation? So I I know that uh, Hi-Fi Rush was also announced yesterday, coming to PlayStation Four and Five. Sea of Thieves, is that? I believe that got a PlayStation. I don't know if it's PlayStation and Switch. I can't remember where it was announced. Yeah, that one. I'm not sure. I don't see it. Okay, and that's coming to PS Five. Yep. So not the Switch. I had read that this is Rare's first ever game appearing on a PlayStation console. Wow. That's actually kind of incredible. Were majority, well, they were one-third owned by Nintendo way back when they were pumping out stuff for the N64, an early GameCube. Then they were acquired by Microsoft, so they've never released wow. any games on the PlayStation. Okay. That's, that's super cool. That's really exciting. Yeah. So nice to see what we talked about last week where Microsoft right. had that weird little should have been an email impromptu podcast thing. And they yeah. said, this four title's coming, but we're not going to say it because we're going to let them announce it. And then within a week, we got confirmation that the four rumored titles were exactly those four titles. Um, but that that's really cool. That's nothing but a win for gamers all around. Uh, yesterday, though, for the direct, um, I was really excited to see Ender Magnolia. Oh, yeah, you were, yeah, you said that. Really excited about Ender Magnolia. So I played Ender Lily's Quietus of the Night, a super unique Metroidvania Souls-like where you you play as a, as a young girl, but the combat is all done through, like, this spirit system. And even though the, the controls are very similar to typical Metroidvania combat hack and slash, you, you don't do anything. As, as a little girl, you just have summons fight on your behalf. Really unique. Ender Magnolia, I knew that the dev was working on a sequel, but they had been very, very quiet about it for about the better part of nine months. And all of a sudden, sure. it just comes out of nowhere at the Switch uh, or the Nintendo Partner Direct. That was very cool. Um, I also saw, and I'm sure you've seen this as well, that it wasn't in the U.S. Direct. But, yeah. <laughs> but what, Mother 3? Mother 3, uh, that's a bit disappointing. Yeah. You know, obviously there's a great translation out there, but it's it's not the same. I mean, we want to see it officially supported, obviously. I saw that a toy made a statement, too, that was like, ask Nintendo. Yeah. Like, so. And then, the and then Reggie also it. said, yeah, ditto. <laughs> yeah. Stop asking me. I'm not even there yeah. anymore. <laughs> Yeah, that was a bummer. There was also a very cool looking game that was like, uh, it's a lot of industry veterans got together, but it's not like a first party studio or, you know, like a big AAA title. And I, I it's called like Raid something. I forget. Uh, it was in the Japan only oh, direct okay. as well. I thought it looked very interesting. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't actually watch the Japanese one. I just saw that Mother Three was sure. announced for the the Japanese direct, and not yeah. the U.S. And people were. I mean, my expectations were incredibly low, and I was pleasantly surprised. I ended up getting a day one title, which I did not right. think would be the case. So yeah, that's super cool. I will be taking a look at that demo, but uh, yeah, it, it's been it's been fun to have these directs and the just events coming out. Because while we know that the next few months are, are fairly well stacked with games, uh, especially if you are a console player, but the latter half of 2024, for me at least, wasn't looking very, very promising. And now we're getting all these events that are showing, hey, by the end of 24, you're going to have a whole lot to get your hands on. Yeah, I think there was a big dump to get everything out 23. Yes. But we are around the time where there's like mid-generation refreshes yep. coming out for Xbox PlayStation. So I imagine there's going to be some hardware that might, I mean, sorry, my games that might try to showcase that hardware. Like when Xbox came out with the series, sorry, the Xbox One X, <laughs> the dumbest naming scheme ever. Um yeah, I think I think we're going to see some smaller titles, but there are also some big titles out there that we don't know release date for. Fable comes to mind. Right. You know? So, I wouldn't say I wouldn't count 2024 out no. and I never expect anything until the summer anyway. So. Right. And that's all that was announced yesterday. So there's Speaking no reason to keep talking about it. Speaking of the summer. <laughs> Speaking of the summer, we finally <laughs> on February 20th <laughs> Bandai Namco put out a tweet saying the wait is over tomorrow, which was now yesterday. We got a trailer for Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC. It was uh, just about a three minute long trailer. 
And let me tell you, From Software knows how to make a trailer. It yeah. was incredible. You and I had been joking around before. <laughs> when they finally announced the direct, I texted it to you. Yes. And you were like, oh, Elden Ring, finally. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, at this point, there's a non-zero chance, right? <laughs> and then they announced it would be the same day as the direct. And I was like, this counts. Yeah, this <laughs> this, this counts. This, this counts. Yeah, it's actually going to shadow drop at the Nintendo Partner Direct. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's huge. I, I saw the price point, though. That seemed unexpected, Yes, right? Am it's, I alone in that? No, you're not alone in that. Even with the rising cost of games, which, again, is, is to be fairly expected, this DLC is by far their most expensive. Uh, I can't recall an, another DLC that they put out standalone that was either 15 they might have had a $20 one. The Ring City for Dark Souls 3 might have been a $20 DLC. Uh, this is $40 US. That's quite the jump. I mean, you're talking about two-thirds the cost of the base game itself. And, of course, the question is going to be, is it two-thirds of the base game's content? Probably not. So they actually had a really good interview um, IGN did with Miyazaki talking about all things of course dlc with for elden ring and he spilled the beans on a few things one being the size of the land at least and the land mm -hmm. is equivalent to uh roughly limgrave which is your starting area in the base game uh, which it's it's sizable don't get me wrong but it's probably limgrave is only a quarter maybe a fifth of the size of the overall land in the game uh, possibly even less than that so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. It'll be interesting to see roughly how many hours a typical playthrough of the DLC is going to be, just because that is that's a big ask, and it's also a big ask time wise because it comes out June twenty first. At that point, Elden Ring is nearly two and a half years old. Yeah. So yeah. you're asking for people to invest another forty dollars and wait two and a half years to play additional content in the game. Um, don't get me wrong. It's going to absolutely shatter records. Um, I have no doubt about that whatsoever, but I'm just, I'm definitely curious to see w what they can do. From Software makes great games. They are a developer that I trust implicitly, but also their DLCs far exceed anything their base game produces. It has been true yeah. since Dark Souls 1. It's a tough position, right? Because, first of all, they were radio silent for so long yes. after announcing their intention to have DLC. So people were building this up in their heads mm -hmm. already. Um, and, I mean, a lot of time doesn't necessarily equal a quality product. Right. Sometimes it can point to issues behind the scenes. Um, and then they come out and there's a $40 price point. I feel like now people's expectations might be at a point where... There could be a lot of people setting themselves up for disappointment. That said, I know that they have a streak of putting out very high quality content. And there's a reason that people are excited because they have a pattern of really putting a lot of thought into their game, adding a bunch of new mechanics, a lot of quality lore and everything behind the scenes. But I'm just worried that people might start to overhype themselves yep. now. Absolutely. With the price tag attached to it. And how long it's taken, I think people are filling in a lot of blanks that nobody said. Sure. You know? Sure. And, you know, let's say that the DLC comes out and a single run-through takes, let's say, 20 hours. And I don't know anything. I do not have a copy of the DLC, I promise. Let's say one average playthrough takes 20 hours. People are going yeah. to tear that DLC apart and say, wait, $40? For a DLC where I only got $20 worth of content, yet the base game was $60 and I got yeah. $140 in a single playthrough. Well, I mean, I'm not a FromSoft person, right? Mm -hmm. But as far as I've seen as a lay person, what if it's six? You know, they haven't really promised a particular Correct. length or anything. Correct. People are filling in a lot of gaps they that, are. that FromSoft never mentioned. Yes. And I feel like... It's only setting itself up to be put in a pretty unenviable position when it comes out. That said, they haven't promised anything, but they also haven't overhyped it. So I think it's now at the mercy of public opinion. Yes. And it's going to, the longer it takes to come out, the more that opinion is going to run away into more and more fantastical oh, speculation. Oh, just go and look at YouTube now and just look up Elden Ring DLC Reaction. 
yeah. hundreds upon hundreds, if not thousands, of videos were produced by noon yesterday. Yeah. Hyping this up to no extent. Um, I'm excited. I really, I, I don't think I'm going to be disappointed. Their DLCs, like I say, they always somehow step it up from the base game, with the one exception being Dark Souls 3, the painted world of Ariandel. It had one cool boss fight, but otherwise it was tiny, lackluster environments. One boss fight that was completely a waste. But everything else they've done DLC has just been top notch. So it'll be it'll be really yeah. interesting to see how these next four months shape up because I know there's gonna have more trailers. We're gonna have people who just already have figured out all the lore just from every frame that they've analyzed. Um, yeah. But June twenty first. If I can bring back a, a phrase that was beaten into the ground yeah. back in twenty fourteen. Hype responsibly. <laughs> Hype respond. Now, what what would that have been in regards to in twenty fourteen? Uh, can't think of anything. Nothing. Hmm. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. It's uh four months. It's gonna go by so fast. And there's some other games coming. I know we've already talked about things we're excited for, but uh, we were just talking sure. Dragon's Dogma two right before we hit record. That's right around the corner. Rise of the Ronin. I know a lot of people that are psyched about that. Um, Is that the Koei Tecmo? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Team Ninja. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That'll yeah, be. Yeah. I I think uh I think we're we're looking at a lot of good titles this year. I think there hasn't been anything announced that people are absolutely nuts about, which is why the comparisons to twenty twenty three have been light so far. But I'm I'm happy. I feel spoiled. I'm getting a lot of good stuff. Yeah. You know. No, it's gonna be. It's going to be a good year. And like you said, don't discount the rest of the year either because we still have several major events coming up. We know that in June, everyone's going to put on a big show and yeah. we're going to get a lot of info for the next six months after that. Maybe even Silk Song. Who knows? Probably not. <laughs> not Jeez. Uh, hey, did you tell me what you were playing, by the way? No. Were you just busy? no I've been yeah. playing the Stanley Parable. Oh, uh, like you're supposed to. <laughs> you that obviously is implied given this episode. You truly terrified me with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, I'm gonna act like I was so busy with Persona, I forgot what we were even playing. Yeah, no, that's that's totally fair. And then I thought, well, because we we reversed the order this month, you did your game list first, and then I did mine. And then I thought, well, did we re-reverse it <laughs> for yeah. for the actual discussion portion? Oh no. Uh, so frankly, the, the two games that I've been playing, Ori, of course, and, uh, Dragon's Dogma, just temper those expectations. All right. I'm trying not to overpromise and, uh, under deliver, but, uh, uh, things are, things are happening. There are things, yeah. there are things at play. Just tell me yes or no. Did you hit record? Yes. Okay. Yes. We're in here, boys. Yes. We, we I, uh, I hit record on three separate occasions, scrapped all three. Oh. So I'm still at square one. Um, one step up and two steps back. But, but just, you know, the bravery for me to hit that F9 key on my keyboard, which is my record hotkey. I'm proud. What a hero. I'm pr- <laughs> Look, I don't <laughs> throw the hero word around lightly, but no, I am, though, for doing but that. But I deserve it. But I right, deserve obviously. that. <laughs> you know, uh, I had said something last week. Um, oh, wait, you didn't even finish telling me what you were playing. Oh, that's I'm it. So Dragon Song and Ori. <laughs> that's all I've... I, it just... Work has been crazy. Like I said, sickness has just unfortunately run rampant through the house. There's even a, a wonderful bout of pink eye going around. So, yay. Oh, uh, so, just just trying to stay afloat and occasionally sit down and um, veg with the old YouTube. Sure. Did you catch anything? This is something I talked about last week uh, from the streamer awards at all. I did not. Nothing. Oh, bummer. Was it good? I thought, yeah, it was really fun. Um, my wife and I watched it. And uh, it was a really good show. Um, I'm a fan of BB No Money. He performed at it. And he, uh, went during his performance, took off his shirt and had a huge... He painted the Asmund Gold's face on his stomach. Why? <laughs> Which was... Because he's a fan of like watching WoW streamers. Okay. But um, it was additionally funny because Asmund Gold had already lost <laughs> well before his performance. <laughs> uh, so it was very funny. Um they do a lifetime achievement award almost. Okay. I forget. It's called a legacy award in their thing. But it went to Maximilian Dude, which I thought was really excellent. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. I'm not. He is a fighting game streamer. Uh, well, he's a fighting game YouTuber first. 
and he's very well known for uh, being kind of the entry point for new players into fighting games. He makes very approachable videos that like engage people in the fighting game community and then kind of shepherds them into individual games and stuff. And he's done a lot throughout his career where he like helps to revive old titles and stuff because of all the passion he has for like the classic arcade games and stuff. So it was very emotional when they were giving the award. I had nominated him for fighting game streamer. That's why he was there. He was a nominee for fighting game. Mm -hmm. streamer. He ended up losing that award um, to a, a smash brothers player. You buy, which is kind of expected given the popularity of smash, you know, mm -hmm. it's hard for other fighting games to really get their recognition. Um, so he, said that he kind of expected to lose in that category, but then they like surprised him with a legacy award and it was, it was really that cool. Is really his cool. wife was with him and his, one of his friends from uh, his, his channel was with them and they were all very excited. So it was great. It was a fun award show. It was just fun to hang out and watch it with my wife, but I didn't know if you saw any, anything, any streamers you like that won any awards or anything. No, but, nothing at all. Nothing yeah. at all. I have found, I don't know what it is, I have um I haven't been watching as many streamers in the last probably six months or so. Uh and I don't know what it is that's either changing with my my own choices and content, but I have been really, really geared more towards watching the pre recorded things on YouTube. Sure. It's because of inflation, right? It, it's not not because of inflation. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> but it's also not because of that at all. Uh, sure. I, I think part of it is when I'm sitting down to watch YouTube, and I've said this before, I I enjoy people who speak from a place of experience, knowledge, and passion. Mm -hmm. And when I'm watching streamers, I, I can get that, but <sighs> I'm really starting to be much less interested in the hype trains and the constant thank you for subbing hey thanks for that twitch prime oh thanks for the six months and and, and it's not that it, I, they shouldn't do that but it to me it takes away so much from the conversation that i want to be hearing i'm not there for the entertainment value necessarily i'm there more so because i want to hear someone talk excitedly about something that that they're excited about um, sure. And I just don't get that from streams as often. Every now and then I'll tune into, you know, the Souls Runners doing no hit runs and whatnot. And there's some great ones. Uh, but more often than not, um, I've actually been tuning into a lot of smaller channels for uh, bullet hell type games and roguelikes. And they're speaking from a place of experience and authority and really getting exciting, uh, excited about these small indie games that I probably will never touch. But I just really love just their commitment and passion to uh to everything they're speaking. So Yeah. Yeah, streams That's not great. so much lately. Yeah, when I watch streams, it's usually a lot of events. Okay. Or or speedrunning is a big one. Yes. Uh in fact, one of the speedrunners I really like ended up winning the speedrunner award, which was really fun. And who was that? Uh Virtual. He plays Trackmania. Wor virtual? Yeah, it's like virtual with a W. With a w. Okay, so he just typoed his own name. <laughs> He's Norwegian. I don't know if that means something. In oh, way. yeah. No, that, never mind. That makes sense. <laughs> I make videos about Trackmania. That's what his channel says. And yeah. No, no, he's great. He's been nominated every single year since the Streamer Awards started and never won. Oh, no. <laughs> so then this year he finally took it home, which is great. But I mean, I feel like the speedrun category is always really stacked. But you know Distortion. Distortion uh, yep. 2 was one of the nominees yep. this year. So. Absolutely. Distortion 2. I have to say, uh, maybe personality-wise, I don't think I'd necessarily go out and grab a drink with him. Sure. But I that guy's raw talent for speedrunning, whatever game he picks up, he excels at. And I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying it's all natural and he doesn't put in the work. He does, but I've never seen him pick up a game and say, hey, I'm going to speedrun this, and then he's terrible at it. He is always on the heels of world record holders within days of picking up a new game. I mean, there's something about he just has a skill set that just translates so well into speed running. It's impressive. Yeah. I mean, how many times do you watch GDQ and there's like repeat runners in completely different games? Yes. You know? Right. It's it's really cool to see stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, I got tired of speed running this one, so I decided to switch it up. And oh look, now I'm the world record holder a month later. <laughs> exactly. It's it's absolutely insane. Yeah, because I think he held the record in only up this year. I which has like exploded in popularity. I, yeah, I think he did as well. 
I think he did as well. That's cool. But yeah, you want to talk about passionate people. That's yeah. Speed running, I think is an yeah. easy place to find a big, uh, healthy picking of them. yes yep yeah, it's true and that's what i love and especially um even with speed running i'll often watch either a vod or uh i really like who is the one guy uh carcinogen oh what's his name i have to look this up carcinogen sda carcinogen sda he does a lot of no damage runs for resident evil uh, games yeah and dead space things like that and um he'll always upload his commentaried runs and he also does runs with no commentary and i like listening to that because again just anytime someone will speak from a place of knowledge and and i don't care what the category is if you're excited about something and you want to share that knowledge with me and you can do so passionately i will sit there on the edge of my seat the whole time and about a topic i've never heard of or really couldn't care less about but you've got my attention if you're excited that's good news because there's been a shake-up in the world of Digimon. Oh, Gamer. shoot. I walked right into that. <laughs> there actually has. I won't talk about it. It's not really uh, oh, relevant. Well, okay. Interest, can but... I mean, can I get like a 60-second spiel? Because you've at least piqued my curiosity. Sure. There's, uh, there's a particularly uh, long-running series of games, like the main Digimon titles in quotes, which are called the Digimon Story games. Um, And for a long time, since the original DS, they've been headed by one director. Uh, He just revealed recently that he has not been in charge of Digimon games. He's not been the uh, lead producer on Digimon games since April. So pretty much he launched Digimon Survive. Hmm. And then there hasn't been much since then. But uh, Bandai confirmed that they are working on new Digimon titles. And then the more unsettling news recently is that Bandai apparently scrapped a bunch of games in hopes for moving forward with, like, online-only games. So people are a little scared now. It's like you got rid of the main guy, and then are we just going to get some crappy free-to-play online thing to sell a battle pass? Right. Oh, hmm. Okay. Well. I'm not not necessarily concerned. Yeah. Um. Because right now, uh, Toei has three incredibly profitable franchises for them, and they're One Piece, Dragon Ball Z, and Digimon. And One Piece just got a big RPG. Dragon Ball Z is getting a killer fighting game. I think it's got 165 playable characters (laughs) in the new Dragon Ball Z fighting game. And then uh, there's nothing new from Digimon yet this year. So Wow. Huh. That's all. That's all. I tried hey. to keep it brief. <laughs> no, no, that's that is good. Huh. I was not planning on saying that, but you set me up I did. so well. I did. I set you up and then you <laughs> can't just say, well, there's been a massive shake up in the world of Digimon, the likes that have never been seen. <laughs> but I'm not gonna tell you. Yes, you will. You're gonna right now. <laughs> I need to hear. No, that's cool. That that's you know, like I said, if it's something that excites you, and hey, if you're listening at home. If there's something that excites you and you want to tell me, I'm all ears. I'll listen. There's a Discord for that. There's a Discord for that. www. Okay, great start. <laughs> Very relevant. Discord. I feel like EU. This is like an incredibly boomer thing to say, but do Zoomers even not even Zoomers probably Gen Alpha even know that you can put www in front of web pages? <laughs> Do you not still do that? All the time. <laughs> I make sure. You know, when I when I type with my two pointer fingers, I always make sure to hit that the hunt and peck method. And you, yeah, you have to take a break between each one. You can't just hit them fast. Is that what? Is that what? Like, who? So who's Gen Alpha? How old are they right now? That's after Gen Z. Yeah. So they're what? Like twelve? Yeah. Um, generations, as they're defined in American culture, are typically twenty years. So, uh, Gen Z, like they're toddlers right now, Gen Alpha. Oh, okay. But toddlers so not are not 12. Ads, so, yeah. <laughs> no. So, my Gen Alpha has pink eye, is what you're saying. Right. Gotcha. Yes. I have Generation Alpha conjunctivitis in this house. <laughs> Diagnosed. All right. It's serious now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time, unless you have any other topics that you want to go on about, we can go back to Elden Ring. I'm cool with that. No, I am particularly excited to talk about Stanley Parable. Stop. Today. 
<laughs> Stop. I will leave this podcast. Ori and the Blind Forest, Blind not forest. Ori and the Will of the Wisps, as I have want to say so many times. Wait, what? And the Blind Forest, right? Yeah, I'm not doing the bit again. <laughs> yes, I did play the proper Ori game. Uh, and I would like to know what you thought of it. Okay. Uh, I don't have any cohesive thoughts other than to say I can't believe I missed this game when it came out. Sure. I absolutely adore it. It is checking just about every box. My my complaints aren't even complaints. They are minor little squabbles that I've had that I can easily overlook because of the art direction, because of the ridiculously cutesy characters, um, because of the way that they demonstrate the foreground and the background and the parallaxing. I love when characters actually move in the foreground and then you actually get to meet them later on. The movement tech is crisp and clean, minus some floatiness of the jumps. I know that that's part of the design, but I'll kind of touch on that later on. Uh, the pacing, you mentioned pacing in one of our recent ones lately. The pacing feels so good. Just when you start to master one of your new movement techniques, you get another one to incorporate into it. And the way that they structure the uh, very natural and organic tutorials just feels amazing absolutely yeah, I can take it love it. It. yeah I'm that's what kidding. i meant yeah it's fine uh yeah. <laughs> no obviously it's an incredibly high quality yeah. well-made game that is very fun to play uh yeah we can get into the specifics of it you said that the cons are relatively minor and i would agree with that but i would say for me they snowball oh they are a lot of minor things that end up building and building and building till they're annoying but seriously, even with that said, very, very few cons I have written down for this game. It is incredibly high quality. Uh, there's a reason that this series is as, as successful as it is. And uh, I will say up front, I have not beaten it, but I have every intention to. So I'm going to, this is where I'm going to drop a big bombshell. Are you ready for this? Sure. No one saw this coming. You didn't either. And everything is telling me not to do this. But guess what? Tell me. Remember, you know how I said a few episodes ago that from now on, I was going to record a, a kind of a standalone blue plays to go along with these games that we discuss. I do. Well, I did that for Ori. Whoa. But I took it many steps further because, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening at home right now, and I'm going to have to make Whoa. sure I time it correctly. <laughs> not only is there a single episode that you can go watch me play the entire let's play Whoa. of me playing Ori in the blind forest just went live for you to binge if you watch he hit record a lot a lot now that's awesome i'm also committing myself to that because i've still i'm only about halfway through the game oh, um, okay. <laughs> but wow. Thankfully, we're recording this in advance, and um, yeah, that, that's the plan. I'm actually going to have the entire thing go live during this podcast. It is going to absolutely trash my stats. It's going to put me at the bottom of every algorithm, and I just don't care. I want to see what happens, because this game has been a blast. Also, can we talk difficulty for a second? Sure, would love to. Uh, okay, I, I, I have to assume you're playing on the, the standard difficulty? That is correct. Okay. I mentioned, I think, last week that I'm on the second from highest. The highest just being you only get one life. Yeah, you did say that. Yep. I'm on the, the actual hard difficulty. Um, right now, I want to say I have six of the health spheres, maybe seven. And most enemies in the area that I'm at are doing uh, three to four damage per hit. Wow. But it's very rarely the enemies that are getting me killed. It's the environmental hazards. But this, the difficulty is fine because of the save mechanic. I love it. Yeah, that is a big uh, pro for me, the save mechanic. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who did not play, don't know, there is a set of, as well as your spheres that represent your health, you also have ones that represent your, what's the term? I think it's just called there? energy. Energy, yeah. Um, and if you have a full one of those, those I played on controller where you hold mm -hmm. B, 
you can create a save point, but it expends one of those energy, but you can save anywhere, technically. You can save um, just as long as it's, it's it can't be near an enemy, and it can't be in an area where there there's some sort of incoming danger. Yeah, it just says in an unsafe yes. area mm-hmm. if you try. Um, it's a big risk reward. Yep. It is a really fun extra mechanic on top of it that is not necessary, but incredibly cool. Um, it kind of allows you to uh, change the difficulty in any way you see fit, provided you have the actual resources to right. spend. Right. It was very cool. I really like that. Very, very cool. And I also like it because one thing that, you know, playing on the harder difficulty, I've died a lot. I think I've died 108 times at this point, is what the okay. stats say. And it, there will be a time where, you know, you come across a really minor cutscene. It might be five or ten seconds, like when you're uh, chasing the guy who store, stole the water veil. I assume yeah. you got that. Okay. And every now and then when you catch up to him, you see a little cutscene. And if you die after you watch that cutscene, you have to watch it again and again yeah. and again. So I finally, especially because I'm recording this and I don't want to show every single little yeah. run back, <laughs> I will save immediately after watching a cutscene just in case I die so I don't have to go through Same. it again. Almost every time. <laughs> yeah. It's very frustrating if you keep dying on a part and it's like, okay, shut up. Because there's no skip button either. There's no skip button. Um, and, but this is the save system. So they call it the Soul Link. It's also really unique, at least from what I can tell from other Metroidvanias that I've played, in that uh, a game like Hollow Knight, when you die... You don't lose progress, you just drop your your soul, right? So like in yeah. the souls, like you have to go and pick up your blood stain, your soul, your XP, what have you. In Ori, it is truly a save. If you die, you're going back to the last save and any collectibles that you have picked up, any enemies you've killed, all of that is is wiped out. And it's back yeah. to that, that original save state. Yeah. It's different. And I like it's it. It's fun. And there's also an ability you can unlock pretty early on which allows you to rekindle yes. mm-hmm. a save so you can continue to reuse the same save point. Because when you start the game, when you drop a save, that's it. Yep. You can go back to that save point and access the ability tree, but you cannot resave on right. the same point, so you need to expend another energy. Yeah. You can get an update, uh, uh, an ability, uh, I think like three or four into the yeah, pretty, top Pretty early the on, yep. Yeah. So it'll cost like three ability points to get there, but you can finally reuse that save and that's a game changer it is it is i have found myself using especially because there's if you put it at the crossroads of some place and you have to go you know left to get one rune key and right to get another one having it right in the middle and just constantly saving every time you cross paths with it just you know chef's kiss so the the soul link it is really cool you can only have one at a time yeah so when you create a new soul link your other one goes away so it's not like you can just have a save point dotted every 10 feet in the game um (laughs) the game's also rather uh giving when it comes to those energy cells it's not really difficult to go if you're thinking oh shoot i have one hit left i need to create a soul link chances are there's an energy crystal relatively nearby you can go and pilfer to get a single one for the soul link yeah, there are some doors that require a certain yes. amount of energy to open. Mm-hmm. And when you're in there, you're kind of in a desert where you're not really going to recover them anytime soon. Yeah, that is true. But for the most part, they're pretty generous with how they're placed around the map. Yeah, yeah. It's been great. And then you also do have some other static save points, these wells that you can find. And those also act as fast travel points, which is really, really cool. Uh, so yeah. the game has just been, it's been a delight um, I got one achievement yesterday where I uncovered the mysteries of the Nauru. Uh, kind of get went off the beaten path to find, uh, I guess, the, the Nauru village, which was pretty cool. Okay. And you got to see that play out. So we're singing the praises. That would be the uh, the creature that rescues yes. Ori in the opening cutscene. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we, we've really been singing the praises. And I, I would like to hear, because I'm very curious to hear what you mean when you say some of the... The things that irk you uh, have snowballed. Sure. So I was wondering if you could elaborate. Uh, super quick, I just thought of it, actually. Another time it also autosaves is as soon as you start a boss fight or mm. a locked door. Okay. So if you die, it immediately throws you at the beginning of that. So I actually to worry about what- didn't know yeah. that. Oh, look at the guy bragging. Yeah, about no, no, no. It's just it I've never I've never died to a challenging sure. combat experience. But tell me sure. more about what that's like. <laughs> how did it's that make called, you feel I'm bad at games <laughs> which is why i play on normal or easy and it made me feel like i'm bad at games which is why i play on normal or easy it justified uh, your decision <laughs> sure 
Um, yeah, so what I'm saying about... Okay, so I'm going to give you my cons. They're kind of all at once because they're all incredibly minor gripes and somewhat related, okay? Uh-huh. Um, what I have written down, first of all, this is something I'm sure you agree with. Some of the traps, especially in the beginning of the game when you're getting used to it, blend in with the environment <sighs> and they are not always obvious where the traps are. Sure, yeah. Like some of the thorns and stuff, the color palette they use, like they'll be yellow in a green environment, which like kind of flows neatly. Um, and it's not always obvious where a trap is necessarily. Uh, so a lot of times you'll, you might, if you're paying attention to an objective ahead and not looking at the ground right in front of you, you might take some unnecessary damage that is not fatal, but is annoying. <laughs> um, you get used to the game and I will say that it gets better when you go to certain areas. Like you were just talking about getting the water totem. Yep. Uh, that area is a lot darker and the spikes and stuff are far more pronounced. So it, it, it's lessened in that regard, uh, but it adds up, you know, taking that damage unnecessarily a few times. Oh, gets yeah. Annoying. Um, somewhat related to that. It's really great. A lot of the effects in this um, are pronounced because they have a glow to it of various colors, mm -hmm. but that loses its meaning when every single thing glows. Yeah, and then it it gets hard to avoid enemy attacks and stuff because some of it is good glowing, some of it is bad glowing, but it's all glowing. <laughs> it's just overlapping, and it's it's a lot of noise sure. on the screen sometimes when it shouldn't be. Sure. You know? Okay. Um, this is a this is as the uh, get good has since become skill issue with the zoomers. This is skill issue. Okay, <laughs> on my part. But you, you, when you unlock the double jump, which is fantastic, love the double yes. jump. I love that it's a directional double jump, so you can alter the momentum. Um, it's super fun. But there are these flowers that act as springs, and in order to get the highest possible jump, you need to time it so that you press and hold the A button as you make contact, so you get a higher jump. As soon as I unlocked the double jump, the timing was so unforg unforgivable that I would try to time it to get better jumps on those flowers and oftentimes do a double jump just before I touched it by accident. And I would die to, in the example, the water thing, like the rising tide, yes. where I'd be being attacked by something and I would die for something that's like, I mean, I'm close to the window. There's no kind of, you know like a like a ledge grab almost okay it, it just felt like am i am i really deserving to lose out on this particular mechanic or or is it being a little stingy um again very minor gripe i know it's a skill issue but whatever okay um another gripe i have um this is very specific there's one enemy that will erupt out of the ground and shoot <laughs> an arced projectile uh -huh. at you the distance from which they appear feels inconsistent to me. Yeah, okay, I can absolutely agree with that. And they rely way too much on very essential puzzles. Yes. Uh, that enemy attacking you, and it is not a constant. It feels bad when it messes up, and sometimes you are on a timer or in a panic, and it disappears because you get a step too close to it then you have to wait or just die. <laughs> it is. It doesn't feel good. Mm. It makes it feel like it's outside of your hands, and that doesn't feel good as a player. Wow. Um, and then the last thing, again, this kind of goes along with the glow. One thing I am not a fan on games, anytime there is an option to turn it off, I will, but screen shake. Yes. Uh, screen shake is not necessarily a bad thing. It can enhance uh, a, a particularly tense moment, but it is the most intense in this game when it requires the most concentration and with all the glowing effects and everything that are going on, the environment that blends in with these traps and these insane screen shakes, it, it, it gets very frustrating at times. The times that require the most uh, concentration also are subject to the most screen shake. Mm. I, I just want a toggle. That's all. Yep. If I could have a toggle for that and maybe adjust the bloom, the game is a thousand times better. Sure. And maybe Will of the Wisps has it. Um, but even listening to it, you can see that those gripes are considerably minor. But when you're in a very intense part, they all coalesce and make an experience that is 
less than the quality of the rest of the game, which is extremely high. Yeah. Wow. You you have some things that I didn't think of. Yeah. And and when it's, I talk about mine, they are super mine. <laughs> it's because look, no one's ever going to praise the glowing or the screen shake right. in a game, but you'll know when it's bad. Sure. You know? It's like editing in a movie. You'll never think about like, whoa, the editing in that movie is really good until you see bad editing in a movie, you know? So it's like the fact that I'm noticing these at all kind of signals to me that like, okay, they're done what I perceive as incorrectly, but I don't design games, so I don't know. Right. Oh, boy. But let's talk about the good. Oh, boy. Because you talked about yeah. a floaty jump. You said you wanted to talk a little bit more about that. It, okay, so the floaty jump, it it fits the theme and the character as being a, a very kind of lighthearted and, and quite literally made of light character. Um, yeah. But there are times when I actually... I don't like how much control I have over my character in the jump. And I don't know how to explain that very well. But there's times when the the jumping, the, the floatiness of the jump, and the fact that my analog sticks will change my direction, like, drastically, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't feel very precise. And for a... I love it. Really? Yeah. No yeah, issues I with really the jumping? Do. Just, okay. All right. No, because it... it cause it plays into um, another pro of mine, but momentum in this game feels really, really good. And I think on top of it, momentum is animated really well. It, so yeah. I think it feels natural because it looks exactly the way I'd expect from the environment swaying and like the, first of all, another big pro of mine is the player speed is excellent. Like you walk at the most appropriate speed for this world, if that makes sense. I love how quickly your character moves. Um, I don't ever like, oh, I need a dash here. I need a sprint or yeah. something. Um, so it's like the the movement speed is taking me across very well. And as a result, I feel like the faster movement speed carries naturally into the momentum of the flow to your jump. And I feel like it gives me a lot of control because it's what my brain is anticipating is how this character would move. Okay. Does yeah. that make sense? I said a lot. No, it, it does. It's... <laughs> It's hard to say, and it's certainly not all the time. And yeah. I think I think it absolutely shines with puzzles. It's just when there is, for me, preci- like precise, not pixel perfect or frame perfect or anything like that. But when I have to land on a on a platform that's only about as wide as my character is, I find yeah. myself clipping the side. And like you said, since there is no you know ledge grab or anything like that, I find myself overshooting more often than not just in those certain circumstances Mm -hmm. i get it yeah absolutely um you've also made it further into the game so there might be times that that is more uh more required than what i've already encountered yeah possibly i'm not i'm not sure maybe i'm just being you know i'm just sharing my own little minor gripes and then there's one and i don't know if you've experienced this and it was it is minor because it doesn't impact the game at all but the perspective and the the field of view changes somewhat frequently. Yeah. When you come into a new area or if you're coming across like the, a big vista, the camera will pan out. Therefore, your field of view is changing and your sense of perspective is kind of thrown off. And what I have found is that there are times when I'm looking at a ledge that I, in my head I know, air quotes around that, I can reach. I suddenly can't reach because it's yeah. constantly shifting my perspective and I can't recall any other game doing it this frequently. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. It absolutely does, yeah. you know, and it does help to show off a sense of scale and, uh, you know, it can really show distance traveled very, very well. But this game seems to do it every few minutes. I hadn't noticed that as much, mm. actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm surprised because I think um, I think it feels natural at like thinking back on those shifts um, because of what you said earlier. Like the pacing of the game is like constantly driving forward, and as a result, I think sometimes the way that the world moves, although the music and the atmosphere is very relaxing and extremely well done, the 
like movement, the momentum, everything is like kind of frenetic. You're constantly moving into the next thing and it's like high energy. And I think it just kind of in my head, like flowed so naturally for the mood it was creating that it didn't, I didn't think Hmm. twice about it. Okay. Yeah. And it's, again, it's something I just have to get used to. It just changes so often that it kind of throws off my own Mm -hmm. uh, sense of control over the character. If that makes any sense. I, yeah, I completely understand how it happens. Without a doubt. Yeah. But it, it's been it's been nothing but a joy. I mean, it, honestly, those are the only two things that I sat back and thought, mm, I don't I don't really love this mechanic. But everything else, the like I said, the tech is so unique. Like once you learn yeah. that you can start to zip towards enemy projectiles and certain lamps, that is such a game changer. And then have you gotten the I forget what it's called. The light, light, not light bulb. Oh gosh, I have to look it up. No, I have not. The ice grenade ability or something like that. No. Okay, what is it called? Hold on one second. Light grenade. That's what I'm Googling. <laughs> Ori light grenade. Where do I get the grenade ability? Light burst. That's what it's called. So with okay. light burst, you essentially are creating a, a grenade made out of light. It uses some of your energy and it's used to tackle puzzles where you have to hit a switch that's through a narrow gap that you could never fit because there's briars. But before the game actually told me that I could do this, I thought, well, if I can zip onto projectiles from enemies, can I now use my own projectile? And sure right. enough, you can. Yeah. It's cool. so heckin' cool. And it just opens up so many possibilities. And I felt so giddy for number one uh, figuring that out on my own before the game had a little tutorial on it but also it just the exploration opened up tenfold all of a sudden yeah i would you know we talked about with chrono trigger how like the hook yes. is the trial if you get to the trial you're in yeah i think with ori if you get to the water uh what's it called the the tree oh the ginso tree yeah ginso yep. tree I think if you get there, you're hooked. Like you got, that's yeah. the hook. Yeah, I can agree. And I will say that tree, uh, that's the only one I've done so far. Just absolute pure puzzle solving, yeah. platforming, nonstop, incredibly fun. I mean, it, it seemed to me that like you're when you work your way up to the tree, it's like a fun, almost dungeon type, but platforming puzzle. I was like, wow, this is awesome. I'm really enjoying this. And then you get to the very end of it after you like purify the heart and then the water starts rising you have to escape. And I was like, oh, this is incredible. It's hectic. This is so well designed. It's so perfect. Absolute and schedule the chaos. action is just nonsense. Yes. And, and of course I did it a hundred times because I had to get every collectible <laughs> right. on the way up. <laughs> yeah. But you can only do it in one shot. You can't create a save. So every time you die, yes. you start it all over yes. again. Now, that and was... that... Sorry, yeah. go ahead. I would say that's where the gripes started becoming more and more obvious every time you have to reset. Mm. You know, waiting for that guy to shoot the projectile. Right, yeah. Missing a double jump over nothing. Like, what's important? I can't track the projectile because everything is glowing. Yeah, no, that's but, that's fair. But absolutely, without a doubt, the most fun part. Um, if the game was all that, it would be overwhelming, but it's paced so well right. that those feel like real, genuine rewards for playing the game and utilizing what you've learned to that point. And it, it's almost like you have multiple genres baked into this game, but they blend perfectly. Like climbing yeah. the Ginso tree, to me, that was just like a 2D portal. Like that's it was it was fun with portals is essentially what yeah. it was and you carried your momentum and it felt very much like portal which obviously came out years before but it fit the aesthetics it fit the theme it fit the game perfectly it wasn't jarring in any way it was just a natural transition into something new yeah and they they give you some softballs mm-hmm. uh, while you like explore your ability but just like solving those softballs, you're like, yeah, I got it. Yes. I feel good about this. I'm, I've already mastered this. <laughs> and then they're like, okay, well, here's the real test. So you mentioned one thing, though, just a moment ago that I totally forgot is actually my single biggest gripe. Okay. And that is the idea of collectibles. Oh, okay. And it didn't even dawn on me. I know that I had meant to talk about it, but you just reminded me. So in a Metroidvania, you are encouraged to go out of your way 
because who knows what secrets you're going to unlock when you do that and you know go back to yeah. the very beginning and now that you have this new tech you can explore this and maybe it's a massive shortcut or it's an item that's you know really difficult to find but it really changes the way you play and in ori you have in my opinion none of that every yeah. collectible you get is either going to be a health upgrade which is which is helpful especially on the harder difficulties or yeah. it's an energy upgrade which is helpful for the same reason and it helps you to open up those uh those spirit doors earlier yeah. or 95 percent of the time and i'm speaking anecdotally i don't have evidence in front of me but 95 percent of the right. time it's just ability points and it's not even an entire ability point. no it's just a handful of experience yes yeah yeah and so when I'm looking at the map and I see, you know, because you can unlock different abilities, which will show collectibles on your map. And I'm looking at all the collectibles that I miss thinking, I kind of have no desire right. to go back to get that. Yeah, unfortunate. But when you actually do decide to go for them, they're fun little bite-sized mm -hmm. puzzles. They are. They take, you know, you plop a save down. They take maybe two to five tries yep. to get the hang of and then one really good execution and you feel good but the reward doesn't feel like it always matches what you actually accomplished yeah so I, yes i, I would say it right almost there. never matches i mean if, i would say sorry i i would i was just gonna say if you're someone who you know takes pride in the accomplishment itself that's awesome to me, I don't think the puzzles are actually, at least as of the point that I'm in the game, I don't think the puzzles are challenging enough for the pride to be the reward. I either need something on the other end to say, hey, I'm glad I got this, or this is the way forward, so now I can at least progress the game. But just the pride itself, at least right now, isn't isn't doing it for me. Yeah, I agree. 100%. Um yeah, it's like a choose your own difficulty. I feel like that's for people that beat the game and want more. Yeah, sure. And I don't even know if there's a new game plus, so I can't tell you. 100%. Yeah, I'm not sure. But well, okay. Here's something we didn't mention, and it's kind of crazy that we didn't because the first thing, what a powerful opening. Yes. A way to set the tone for the entire game, the the atmosphere. Like first of all, the setting is phenomenal. Yep. There's very distinct divisions in the forest that make every part of it feel unique, despite it all just being a big collective forest. But they kind of introduce that just in the opening cutscene. Uh, the music, absolutely phenomenal. It reminds me a lot of like uh, like Coraline or like the calmer parts of like Nightmare Before Christmas. Okay. It, it, the soundtrack like a little bit kind of gives me that kind of feeling. Um, and they do... They do so much with very minimal narration. Yes, it is uh, very minimal. They'll say, like, this is what's happening, but then they'll show more to expand yep. on it, but not with words. Yeah. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's just very well done. No, that's a good point. Oh, a lot more showing, not telling. A lot more. Yeah. 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 It, like, establishes the baseline, and then you kind of fill in the blanks based on what you're actually seeing. Yeah. Um, it doesn't treat you like an idiot, which is really nice. <laughs> I feel like... Uh, some games will hold your hand a little too much. Um, it kind of just lets you enjoy the environment, uh, feel what the game intends you to feel with the different uh, soundtrack and character actions that are happening and kind of make you invested almost immediately when they give you control. Yeah, it's it's been it's been a joy. The my my issues are absolutely minor. Um, I'm looking forward to playing more. I don't really have anything else you need to say about it other than you have made me rethink some of the aspects of the game not in not in a negative light but sure. just in a more critical light which i think is fine um sure. and i am curious to see once i finish this i definitely want to jump into will of the whips to see what feedback did they take and run with and also how do they improve on something that's already this incredibly well polished yeah i wonder if it's going to be one of those uh metroid style you lose all your upgrades or are they going to try to continue with some of them that sure. is true i don't know i, I kind of hope they don't yeah i don't know i just love uh, the save link the soul link i think that's so cool it's funny because i remember uh even dark souls 3 was supposed to have a mechanic where you could place a bonfire you would get a consumable and you would be able to place a bonfire in certain locations and they ended oh, up scrapping cool. that mid-development but now I'm looking at Ori thinking they kind of had this 
in, oh, back yeah. in 2015. And it was such a Man, cool idea. That would have been super cool for Souls. Right. Wow. Um, one other thing. Uh, what did you think of the swimming in this? Because there are sections as soon as yeah. you clear the water. Yeah. Uh, the tree, you can swim um, in purified water. <laughs> So I made a comment in the video where, where I unlocked that because the, the water's all poison and you take damage when you go in until you clear the water. And I likened several sections of it to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for the NES. <laughs> the damn level where you have to swim through the electric seaweed and defuse the bombs. Yeah. The, the oxygen meter isn't very forgiving for some of the yeah. areas. And the swimming has you going through some really tight areas where there are thorns on all sides of you. And it that's exactly the feel. I could hear the Ninja Turtles music playing in the background, and I was <laughs> so stressed out. I felt, though, in those sections, I felt like the swimming was pretty precise, though. Yeah, it was. It was. It, it actually like felt good to swim. There was an appropriate amount of urgency because of that water meter. Yes. The air meter. Um but I never felt like it was an inconvenience, and I feel like sometimes it's really hard to get swimming right. Hmm. Okay. So that was actually something that stood out enough for As me to positive. put it on my pros yeah. list. Yeah. Yeah. And um, luckily, when you run out of oxygen, it's not an instant death, all right? This isn't Sonic. This is you're going to slowly, well, not even slowly, you're going to consistently lose life until you die. See, this is my um, I never die during challenging bosses because I didn't even get to the point where I took damage from that. Hmm. Yeah, so we're 1-1 one, one now. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> we need a tiebreaker. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess I have one more thing on my pros list, which isn't, I kind of already said it, but I feel like the music and creature sounds, they like appropriately crescendo to convey the necessary mm. urgency and sense of danger for every particular section, you know? Okay. Like when it's calm and you're exploring, it's calm. It's never like a bunch of action music just because you got into a battle. Gotcha. But when there's a like a big moment, when there's stuff trying to crush you, when you're running from yeah. something, um, it's appropriate. And the creature sounds sound very natural, yet just unsettling enough <laughs> that you kind of know it's an enemy, you know? That is fair. I, it's, but yeah. it, it's just a blast. I, yeah, I don't. The entire environment is so well done. The animation is so unique. Yes. Um. It it conveys the like lightness of the character's momentum super well. I mean, when he's running from you w with the orb. Yes. The way he moves is so fun. I and, love like, it. He's like lanky. He it's very Gumo, long legs right? Gumo was his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't think of it, but you're right. Yeah. And uh, the way he moves with the orb is like so fun. But he's like so lanky yet so like whimsical yeah for like a creature that's supposed to be you know bad looking in quotes that's been like stalking you the entire game i don't know it's just so it feels like they did so much with so little yeah and, and he's the one he's the character that appears multiple times right in the foreground and you just get the silhouette and yeah. i got I, I just got excited every time i saw him i don't know it was a it was a fun little almost like an easter egg like he takes up a good portion of your screen and it's yes. just, I don't know, it conveys such a sense of, like you said, he's just, he's almost stalking you. Yeah, they plant the seeds very early. Yes. Yeah. Very cool. It's those is... Chekhov's Gumo. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember Chekhov. <laughs> you know the idea of Chekhov's gun in movies? No. Okay, so Chekhov's gun in, in movies. It's... Oh, if it appears in the first act. Exactly, right. yeah. Yes, Gumo, obviously. Gumo was Chekhov's gun in Ori. Sure, it's a terrible right. reference. <laughs> exactly i knew that concept i don't know why it didn't come to me but uh <laughs> this is another well, not xbox exclusive but xbox first party game we played wow it is yeah and uh i have to say very quality but yeah a absolutely it's if will of the wisps builds onto this i yeah. cannot wait to get to that game and there were a few years between these two titles i think uh ori and the blind forest is 2015 yes uh the will of the wisp i think took a few years to come out i have to double check here uh 2020 so it was announced the the sequel was announced only two years later in 2017 but it didn't come out until march of 2020 yeah wow yeah what a gap yes yeah but 
I, I, yeah, the first one was so well done. It feels a little bit like lightning in a bottle. It's, it's, it builds off of a genre where people have expectations, you know, like a Metroidvania mm-hmm. and platformer, but the concept, the world, the style is unique enough that it feels like almost a brand new idea. Like when you boil it down to its most basic parts, it's something everyone's done before. Yep. But as a whole, it feels like like this is an Ori type game. You know yeah. What I mean? Yeah. And I think one other thing that sets it apart, it and kind of puts it in the realm of Hollow Knight, but not quite the same, is that Metroidvanias are are often known to be dark, gritty, foreboding. And this game has none of that. I mean, it has the it has the tension, and it has the anxiety building atmosphere, and like you yeah. said, you know the the um, the music and the sound effects really fit it well. But even in its darkest and most perilous areas, there's there's beauty, there's light, there's color, there's uh, dynamic scenery. It it's never gray and washed out and just just depressing like a, yeah. a metroidvania often is yeah you, you, you use the right word i think anxiety like a lot of times when you're playing horror games or games like metroid they use like a lot of strings and unsettling instruments to try to give you that feeling of anxiety to increase the tension but this one just the pacing and the story is so well done that it's not even a necessary tool for yes. them to utilize yep oh. yeah, excellent game i think yeah, uh, it's been on my to playlist for a long time. Same. Funny enough, um, I had a friend who's been recommending this to me for years, and uh, and he's the one I'm doing the one of the people I'm doing the randomizer with, uh, where I'm playing Ocarina of Time. Mm-hmm. I have not touched it in over a week because I've been playing this, <laughs> and uh, he's like, you know, I'm happy you're playing it, but like, come on, yeah. <laughs> I'm like finally doing it at his expense now, but I've played it. I have every intention to continue playing nice. it. I want to beat it and I definitely want to play the sequel. Yes. And I look forward to watching your, uh, your let's play. Of yeah. It. Which is now live. Whoa. Yeah. I, I mean, at least it, it's going to be, it's, it will, it will have been live. Right. It's hard to be as excited because I'm a month before that. Happens. Right. <laughs> right. Which gives me time to actually finish it, but I will finish it. It's it's way too much fun not to. Um, I haven't done this in quite some time, but the other day, and this is after, by the way, so I am uh, I'm a trainer in my professional job. And right now I'm in the middle of a five week long class where I'm teaching eight plus hours a day. And for me to finish that day and then say, you know what else I want to do? Sit down and not only play a video game, but I want to talk about it nonstop yeah. as I play. And I did it for almost uh, two hours the other day, just That's right great. after work because it was it was that enjoyable. Um, and I just love talking about the game. So if you love talking about Ori and the Blind Forest, ready for this segue? Yeah. I'm on the edge of my seat. So last night I was I was sleeping on my Helix sleep mattress, okay? Which you can pick up at www.helix. What, what? is oh. happening? <laughs> I was doing I was doing the ad read. Are we not ready for the sponsor yet? I didn't. I was like, wait, what is going on? <laughs> oh wait, no sponsors yet. Uh, but no, if you want to talk about Orient the Blind Force, or if you want to suggest any other game, and we recommend that you do, absolutely get in the comments right now but also please join the blue lizard jello discord we have a dedicated channel for the forgot to save podcast we love right. hearing from you it's actually a, one of the more active channels i agree yeah uh, it's super fun hearing uh we've gotten a few video game suggestions and uh i they don't know yet that ori is on the menu and i feel like a lot of people are going to be excited yes because uh this is a big one for for metroidvania fans so I think they'll be happy when they hear this episode. And if you would like to talk about it with them, yeah, hop into the Discord. They're going to be even more excited when they found out we actually enjoyed it. Whoa! <laughs> yes, uh, we have noticed that uh, particular games that we have not particularly enjoyed <laughs> has disappointed some people. Yeah. But I feel like even in games we haven't enjoyed, we've talked about what makes them very good. Absolutely. And we and we definitely talk about why or how we can understand why other people love this game and it just didn't didn't ring the right bells for us. Yeah, just know that if we ever don't like a game, it's a personal insult. You should feel bad for liking it. Right. You should hate it. It's us actually for your fault. It. It's all engagement bait. We only <laughs> grow stronger from your hatred. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness gracious. Well, uh, any any closing thoughts other than it's a great game. Go play it. Yeah, no, it's excellent. If you, I believe I got this on a bundle years ago. Oh, okay. Uh, that makes sense. I, If you are unsure about your skill level with the Metroidvania or have wanted to get into a platforming game, this one has incredible atmosphere. It's fun to fail because it's just a nice world yes. to be in. So maybe if you're thinking about taking the plunge, I know you can get this game very cheaply. I would say go for it. Throw it on easy and see how well you do. Um, it's going to be a bit of a challenge because it's a faster pace game. But, uh, it, I mean, it's excellent. Of the incredible list of platformers that I provided you, Blue, I think you chose absolutely one of the best on there. I Yeah, I, I couldn't be happier with the way that this played out. But my wife is probably angry at you. Oh, right. <laughs> About you know, that. Actually, this is a little tangent to, to end it off. But I sometimes as a joke, she'll ask after I record, like, oh, yeah, what game are you playing this week? And I just won't tell her. Just as like a, <laughs> just like a goofy. I don't care enough. She doesn't care enough. But still. <laughs> but she um, was on her Steam Deck yesterday. And she went through your recently played games. Really? <laughs> and she's like, are you guys playing a game called, uh, what is it, Jusant, that <laughs> climbing game? I was like, no. <laughs> so, yes, you were being stalked. Oh, goodness. I'm going to have to turn that off. Or I'm just going to have to start playing a lot more Shower with Your Dad Simulator. Oh, my God. That should be like, you have to stop. Please don't, don't publish this. Are people really watching this? <laughs> oh, my word. Well, Stone, this has been an absolute blast. Thanks so much for, uh, yeah. for sharing this list with me and uh, playing alongside Ori been great to talk about it and folks it'll be great to talk about it with you again drop us a comment join us in the discord and tune in next week when we actually uh i think we're supposed to talk about the stanley parable <laughs> we are in fact it is properly the stanley parable <laughs> next week no i'm not joking anymore i'm excited i haven't picked it up yet i know you said you hadn't correct so it's gonna be fresh it's gonna be fresh it's gonna be hot off the presses Hey man, that's what people come here for. The most up-to-date games like 2015's Ori and the Blind Forest. And Ty Lopez references. Yeah, we got it all. We got it all. We got it. <laughs> I don't know what we all have, right. but we have it all. That's going to do it for this episode of the Forgot State yep. Podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stone, again, as always, it's been a blast. And we will talk to you all very soon. Bye.